Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Wally Mike. But together we are... Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage! Well, Wally Mike, look at this. A new box sealed. A new box sealed. It's not a new product. When we reviewed the 28mm gain that, that Firelock do, Oh gosh, blood and plunder. Yep. They sent us this as well for review purposes. So, you know, full disclosure, they sent us a copy to review. I've wanted to play this for a while. I love me a tall ship and a handsome sailor. Yeah, and a tall ship and a starter sailor by, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is their starter set for their kind of six mil type game. So do you want to crack it open? Oh, can I? Let's yep. show them what's in the box. <sighs> the format for this video, hopefully, assuming everything's worked well, we're going to unbox it, talk about the parts, we're going to play it, uh, a, qu a quick game, and we'll show you a little bit of sped up footage or something, and then we're going to tell you what we thought of it, what it was like as a game to play. And if you're really lucky, you might even stream us playing the, you know, idiots learn to play. Yeah. Right. Here we go then. There we go. Oak and Iron. Box. Ooh. This is nice. It's a nice smell to it. Mmm. Fleet Combat in the Age of Sail. Very nice. Is that the regal book? It's the rule book. Well, there you go. That's not too thick. It's not too thick. Yeah, uh, 30 pages. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice illustrations. Very nice. Shall I have a look at that while yep. you uh, show them the next thing? Right. Do, 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 do. Tokens. Very nice. Now, that is nice, thick card stock, is, isn't yeah. it? It is, yeah. At least three, four mil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Range rulers, measurer. Yeah, so other th things are measured in inches, that things also work in range bands, which keeps it simple. Yeah, so musket range, pistol range, and cannon range. There you go. Terrain. Now, we've got shoals and we've got islands, so some of it's out above water and some of it's below water, so... <laughs> yes, yes, which represent different sort of challenges. Right. So this is a kind of, um, this is an 18th rather than early 19th century stuff. So it's yeah. men of war and caravels and corvettes, I think, rather than ships of the line and yeah. so forth. Um, doesn't actually say it on the back, so I've had to go and look. We've got a sloop, a brigantine. Well, we're um, going to see all them in a yeah. minute, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep forget Oh, There you go. Look at that. So that's a decent amount for the, for the play area to start with. That's a decent amount yeah. of kind of shoals and so forth. Flags so look, feel, like, feel like self adhesive. Flags. Well, they're on photographic paper. Are they sticky? Are these stickers? Yes, they are. You managed to separate them yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. okay. So uh, they're, 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 they're stickers. So pennants and battle flags. Uh, and we've got Spanish, French, English, and Dutch here, as well as uh, the Jolly Roger. Oh. So that's nice. Playmat. Mmm. Looks about an inch, uh, 12 inches square. So. Is that. Yeah. Three by three? Yeah. Let's That's have a look. It's quite okay. thick as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a lot. For paper, Matt, That's this heavy. is like on photographic paper. I'm not sure if the one in. Oh, this is a bit sticky. It's very been unseasonably hot here in the UK recently. Uh, hence, hence the linen shirt and no tie, etc. At my end. Yeah. So this is photographic quality paper. Yes. This. I'm not sure that that was the same in Blood and Plunder start set. It might have been, but I'm definitely noticing it here that this is this is thick and it's nice and it's got some texture to it. You know. Yeah, the varying depth of, of watercolor. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a nice play mat. That's, that's a sturdy play mat. And that was that three by three, four by four. It looks three by three. Three by three. Right. Then all the bits. Now, uh, quick, we've got uh, lots of cards. Lots of cards. There's the ship cards. There's, assuming there's one for each type of ship. Shall I open them up? Yep. And then you got you get admirals that have got different skills. You get right. a deck of cards that give you skills. Some of them that you, you trade off cards with for initiative. Yes. And then I believe the little ones are incident or situation cards. Modifiers. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We'll know more about this. This is why I thought it was important that we play it before we finish the review. 
Because I've had games with a lot yeah. of cards. You, you're kind of guessing, aren't you? So yeah. we'll have a play and we'll tell you. So, you've got your hand of cards. These are the ship cards, as you say. They're, they're lovely, really nicely produced. So what, what, what have we got ship-wise then? Right. Let's see how well you do. Let's have a look at some models. Well, the, the interesting thing with these is they come with oh, well-wrapped plastic bases. Plastic base with various markings on it and two pegs. All the ships fit into the... So you, said, you just said, so all the ships fit into the pegs? Because these, these ships are push fit, right? Yes. Um, and then there's various marks. Unlike other games we've played, there's a, there's a center line mark. Mm. And all measurements are done from that rather than from the front. So if you've got a small ship or a large ship, yes. it's still going to move relatively the same Because distance. the ground scale is so different from the scale of the models. The actual range of 32-pound yeah. naval cannon is a lot bigger than your bedroom. So that's me having assembled the brig. That wasn't terribly difficult. You do need to use a little bit more force than you're necessarily expecting to, I think, um, and worried that it might stack. So the sails... Because they're, they're moulded plastic, they've got some shape to them, you know, compared yes. to the paper sails or the metal sails you get from others. Like the bowing in this sail is, is, is really nice to it. I think you could make these really look quite special with a little bit of, you know, putting a little bit of cotton between yeah. them and rigging them in that way. And they've all got quite long spars above, which I assume is so that you can rig them. Yeah. If you want to. Um, and as I said, they come with the stack cards. There are six ships in here. There's a sloop. There's a brigantine or brig. There's what they're calling a petite frigate or small frigate. A light galleon. A corvette. And a flute. And I know this game has been out for a while. So there's a whole bunch more. You can get men of war. Yeah. You can get different rates of frigates. You know, bigger and bigger ones. Um, so there's the other ship. And then there's... Oh, what's that? They're the clips um, on the ship cards. Yeah. You've got, down the side, you've got all your stats. Ah, uh, so as you take damage and lose crew and yeah. so forth. Do you want to get them out and show them how that works while I get yeah. these? And they have some proprietary dice as well. I mean, these look, look pretty solid. Other, other games where the clips come, mm. sometimes they're little fine cardboard. Yes, absolutely. A, a thick paper. Yeah. Yeah. These are solid plastic and they're quite strong as well. So, so they go on there. Slide up and down. Nice. And, and, the, on, on. and they're fairly sturdy. Yeah. And the nice big mount on the back, so you, if you show them the yeah. other side of it, it's, it's clipping quite well. And in terms of the proprietary dice, these are proprietary D8. So, you know, instead of saying you've got three to hit, these have got different images on. And what that does is it converts your dice roll. It's basically a table instead, yeah. of, a, instead of a number. And that gives you, allows you to have slight variation with the dice. You kind of, it's a two up or it's a three up or yeah. it's a four up. Whereas a table, one, two, three, four, five, six can all be different results right up to eight. And although it may tend towards being good at the top and tend towards being good at the bottom. So yeah, the, what a dice, a pictured dice, proprietary dice like this does is it allows you to have a table on your dice. Yeah. And, 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 so what and have I like got that. on here then? Pistol, cutlass, a sail, rifle, cannon, and skull and crossbow. I'm assuming skull and crossbows is either the one or the eight. So it's either good or bad. Well, I don't think you roll these for numbers. You're just looking for the results that you're yeah. looking for. If you're shooting muskets, I think you need muskets. Yeah. I think that's kind of how that works. Yeah. Okay. But we will know more in a short while when we have a play of this game, and we'll get right back to you. What, we, what do you think as a game? Mechanics, very, very simple to pick up. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't mention when we were looking at the ships, they've got a, actually got a little slot so we can put the ID numbers on. Yep. So when we're playing it, we're not getting confused as to which is my frigate and which is yours. Yeah. Because obviously you can put the pennants on. The, the card system... The initiative. Yeah. Yeah. Really made it interesting. And the... So some of the disposable cards that are really, really powerful yeah. can swing a turn for you. But having to put it down the turn before... Yeah. So the way these initiative cards work is you have a hand of cards. They have two, two elements to them. One is, is the, turn to, the order of operations, as in who will take the first action. Because it alternates. The highest initiative 
moves the first shit. Yep. Then the opponent moves one. Da, 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 da. So that's what that top number is about. But then they have a secondary effect, and that secondary effect can be really big. In most cases, that's really what you're choosing, the secondary yes. effect. And you have to put it down a turn in advance. So one of the things I found really useful was I was constantly using await new orders, which you've got an initiative score of one, which means you go last. But that's often good in, a, in this kind of sale movement anyway. Going last is not bad because yeah. I know you have to move before me, um, but I will shoot second. But I get with that one, I got to choose what my order was going to be in the moment yeah. rather than the turn before. So I use that repeatedly. What, did you have a go-to card? Um, mine was the, uh, the the one you don't like was down. It, down. It, 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 fatigue is is the key. To, it doesn't matter that you take seven damage on a ship and it's it goes down to two speed. Fatigue is the killer. Yes, fatigue it, it absolutely strips the effectiveness out of your ships. Every point of fatigue is minus one dice to every test you make, and some of these ships only shot with three dice. Yeah. <laughs> so even one point of fatigue is a big deal. Yeah. And one of the cards I pulled out is like, is all of my ships got two extra dice mm. in in the firing yeah. phase, which which took you down to some to serious damage. Yeah. But you were in the next turn. You you uh, you took my my ship down fully, which which won the game. I think the thing that lifts this game above other games is this initiative system. I think any fool can create a table of weapons and say that there are different classes yeah. of ships and this one's got more guns but moves slower and so forth. All the games are going to have that. But this initiative system with its extra layer of, of yeah. what the special rule is for that turn makes a huge difference. The proprietary dice were okay. You know, I, I don't inherently like proprietary dice where they just got pictures on instead of numbers. But it did make a difference and it did make sense. So when you get your range ruler, for example, at the longest possible range, you always succeed on the skull and crossbones because yeah. it's a pirate game. Long range, you only hit with cannons. As you get closer, you add muskets. As you get closer still, you, you add the, the, the pistol as, as a face. So it, it kind of works. It's got a critical hit system, which is not... The critical hit is not magazine fire. It's take yeah. an extra point of fatigue and yeah. so forth. So... I think the game I very much enjoyed. I also was aware that this is like a starter set, and I actually think I will enjoy this game more by expanding it. In terms of it as a starter set experience, it teaches you the games, but these are all small ships. Yeah. They're pretty low firepower. If, if, I, if I was going to go again, that would be the smallest ship I would take, my Petty Frigate. Yeah. And you will... Uh, lesser galleon. Yeah, I, I would want a squadron of these or bigger. Yeah, that's not to say I wouldn't take one of these tiny boats because it does have a point system. Yeah, I might, you know, when I've got a few points left over at the end, I'll take a little one. Well, in in the stream game, I use my light ship to to cross the. Your, as you're chasing my big ships down. Yes, I got a couple of rakes on you. Yes, because the game system has within these cards a big advantage for staying in formation, but that does mean sailing in a straight line. Yeah. So in terms of tactics, and again, it's more about these cards than anything else, you had a deck that focused on being dispersed. And I had a build that was focused on being in a squadron. Yeah, so to be in line, you've got to be within pistol range. Musket range. Uh, sorry, musket range of the ship in front. You, c you can be like this. So this ship is, uh, these two are in line. But this one is not in line with that ship, and those two are in line. And then it, so it gets a little bit of a nuance yeah. as to how the ship. So, so just just to just to clarify that this squadron is in formation because this one is in formation with this because that line crosses it, and this one is in formation with this because that line crosses it. But if they're like that, it's more of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So you, there's there's a little bit of space. So you basically so you, it allows you to turn in succession but not turn um in line yeah you got if you turn like that you're not in formation was the first world war german battle turn wasn't it yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> um so we liked the game a lot i think i think that's fair to say we played three games in one day and we were happy to do yeah. so 
Um, the starter scenario is quite low firepower that it suggests in here. And what that means is you spend a lot of turns where not much happens. But that's okay for your very first game. I just would never repeat that scenario. Yeah. It taught us a lot of the rules. Yeah, the, the, the basic me mechanics of manoeuvre, fire, and keep keep your fatigue low. Yes, and, and it was difficult to make a mistake because of the yeah. relatively low firepower of the ships. You could learn the game by doing that. But we played with, with, the, with the three ships each, which is not the introductory scenario, the four smallest ones. With the three ships each, it was quite an interesting game. We did three ships, we each had a, a proper admiral, yeah. and I took one gun upgrade, yes. which gave me a gunner. Your your national characteristic gave you bonuses, yep. my national characteristic. So you get a card, I was pirates with a Dutch um, yep. influence, so I used all of those cards. The British. So the cards and that without any upgrades, we actually had an interesting game. Yeah, and there's, um, a, lot, there's a lot more in this box. The one we have. Yeah. So, as a game, really enjoyed it. There's about a half a dozen expansion packs as well, which yeah. had other ships, which had other admirals, which had other characteristics. We might not have said, you actually build this deck of initiative cards, you choose yeah. based upon your national characteristics and so forth, and a shared deck. So, that's all the strong points. It retails one, just... one more strong point I will add. We played this on a 4x4, four four, yeah. and the, the starter mat is 3x3. Three three. Yeah. We stayed on it for, I think, our first game with the two ships each. I think we went through about 15 turns. Yeah. And we and didn't run out of sea room. We didn't run out of the, the yeah. sea room. We never had to move, do the, like, the lateral shift of any ships. Yeah. And even in the bigger game, as you, if you've watched it, we only got to the middle of the board. Yes. With the movement, because the, 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 the fastest speed is five, which is... So you definitely could run out of space if you were if you were running, you know, uh, large to the wind with big ships, deliberately pushing it yeah. to try and cover distance. You definitely could run out of space. And we reached a point where we were close to the opposite end of the table, but we didn't run out of space. And, and, we, and that's never happened to me in a sailing game. Yeah, no, we, we sailed off the board. And we weren't in a situation that if we went one more turn, we'd have to make an emergency turn. No. Even within, like, five inches of the edge, mm. we could still make normal turns without yes. sacrificing any other actions yeah. or anything to make... Now, I think with bigger ships, which are less manoeuvrable, that might be more of a problem. Because yeah. a lot of these ships get free to get an extra free yeah. turn. So does the game itself, I think, is, is a cracker. If you want to play an Age of Sail game... This one I've enjoyed more. I played the old action on the sale, yeah. WRG rules or whoever they were, Nav one maybe a hundred years ago. I played Black Powders, won uh, Black Seas. Yeah. This is a much better game, much more modern. That's all the strong stuff about it. Having played it a few times, this isn't really a two-player starter set. You need there's a lot of widgets in this game. Yeah. Depending on what speed you're going, your turning circle is different. That's what these are these this angles are on the end here when you turn you push this against the ship in the middle and you rotate it around it so you each need a set of these so you're constantly passing this from one side of the board to the other so too with the range ruler so too with the, the six dice there there were points when we were throwing seven or eight dice yeah. Um, so there wasn't even enough for one player it was rare to use more than five dice but it definitely yeah. happened there certainly wasn't enough dice for one each. And that's not a criticism of the set. It doesn't call itself a two-player starter set. It calls itself a starter set. Yep. I think you do want one each. And the other one is is that we both had two... There's, there's two really good cards. And we took turns drawing out of the generic pile. Because there's a generic card deck from which you assemble the initiative cards. And obviously when you're sharing a, a, a there's set only of them, one, there's one only one copy of each. Yeah. yeah. As I said, I think you literally want this much per player. Yeah. To be honest, I think that, that you can learn to play the game and decide how you like it from this set and have a reasonable game. But if you want to play this game going forwards, you you want you need your own copy of widgets, your own set of dice, your own set of um, markers. Markers. Yeah. There's two colors, numbers one to six. In a reasonable size game, you would have six ships. You yeah. need you need all of them. Uh, I think. But 
did enjoy the game. I'm, I'm going to buy another copy. I'm, I want to play this again. I'm going to definitely going to play it again. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Are you taking it back to play with the boys back in Southampton? I'll take it back. Hopefully, the boys will be interested in playing it, and we'll get a few more games in. And yeah. and we look at look at getting some more bits. So yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't want them to double up the contents of the star set and make yeah. it a hundred pounds box. You know, I think that this this is right. I, th I think it's a great product and I think it's a great game. Yeah, I enjoyed it. All right, guys, that was our thoughts. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.